In this module, um, I had a, quite a few comments that the project was too long, took too many, um, uh, even with the time that you were given for the in-class project that we didn't have, um, you also felt that it could have been split into two. I'm not completely convinced it should be split into two. Um, possibly it's one and a half and it would need some kind of an additional exploration to make it a second module. But I do hear that comment. I apologize to those of you who um, it really kind of overloaded you for the week that you were doing that with your other classwork. Um, so uh, once again, my apologies for that. And I will take it into consideration for future classes um, to kind of uh, kind of reduce that down. And uh, I hope I did try to prepare you a little bit for that by getting rid of the in-class time. With that said, there were some other comments, um, uh, but one that really stuck out was that there was other rendering software that was better at creating these images. Actually, one student said it was a waste of time uh, to do rendering um, inside of Revit because there were better packages available. And I, I hear those comments, and I wanted to kind of like um, uh, offer up a, a bit of a defense for that. Um, one is is that the software that we use for this external rendering that we speak of is things like Lumion, um, uh, Enscape, and Twin Motion, and they they all have another cost to them. At the university, we're privileged to be able to um, to use them under our educational license by being students or instructors, uh, but in the real world, you may not have access to that software. And it'd be a real shame for you to think that that was creating a great limitation because I really do believe inherently Revit has some really some pretty good, strong uh, internal rendering tools. Uh, with that said, though, I'm not discounting the fact that these other pieces of software do that. There's a, a third reason, I guess, or another reason why I don't um, I don't focus on on using this. And actually, this is probably two reasons uh, wrapped into one. Uh, Lumion, um, especially, uh, kind of breaks the BIM workflow. That means that um, when you go out to use Lumion, you might add other features, build your scene. Uh, those scenes aren't captured inside of the BIM modeling environment. So we have you start to create this kind of second piece of a model, and it's really hard to bring those two together. Um, as you're starting to evolve things and making changes. So it, it, it um, inherently breaks the what I call the BIM workflow, that idea of just designing something and then having it ready to make your presentations for you. But that's um, obviously not a deal breaker for a lot of people. And, um, uh, and you know, this is a totally acceptable way to to create high quality renderings at the end. The, the primary reason though that we don't explore these um, is that um, the software or the hardware that we need to run it on, the desktop or laptop computers, we really don't, um, um, many students don't have access to those, at least in the early stages of the program. Um, that would mean that in order to run Lumion and Enscape, typically a graphic processing, a graphics card needs to be added, a graphics processor. That's a second microprocessor that runs parallel with the, the G, uh, CPU in order to handle the uh, complex task of creating renderings. And um, uh, so that adds up the possibility that students wouldn't actually even in this course be able to use that software. So I really don't make that a prerequisite and I don't even focus on using these. With that said, though, I'd really like us all to be exposed to these. They're really quite accessible exterior packages to plug in if you have the hardware to run them on. And um, that may come as an eventuality as you, as you uh, grow through the program. You may acquire new computer equipment. Um, but I want you to also be in mind that if you don't, um, you can make, as I think I'm illustrating um, on this slide, very high quality renderings with inside of Revit. Uh, things that ex you know, can tell um, your instructor or your, um, um, your professor that you are a competent designer who understands lighting and form and shape and all of that without having to use these other tools. Um, so, but... Um, I'd also ask for some help from those that made comments about this idea of external rendering packages, um, being able to do better jobs. I'd like to be able to demonstrate that. So I invite anyone who would like to do some extra credit um, to the level of it being an extra in-class assignment or, um, you know, we could actually negotiate depending on how much work you wanted to put into it, um, to make a Lumion or a Enscape high-quality rendering, something that you think is superior to... Uh, what we're doing inside of Revit, and then um, let us be able to see an A and B comparison. So I would expect you to do a, a Revit rendering, a good quality Revit rendering, and then duplicate that exact camera position and lighting um, in Enscape or um, uh, any uh, Lumion or whatever software you might uh, have. And then write a narrative about that experience um, 
and that way I'd be able to share it in a future lecture with the class. So that would be uh, really beneficial to all of us. And it kind of goes back to that idea of, um, you know, none of us is as smart as we all are together. So I would appreciate any help um, you might like to do on that. Um, we had um, a few questions on the assessment about some things that were ambiguous. Um, and I asked one of the students to uh, send me a note on that, um, just as a reminder. And so I tried to deal with that a little bit. I'll just go over this relatively quickly just to show you that I've addressed it or thought about it. Um, the, the idea that there were uh, pictures that, you know, I, I showed images and then there were um, answers that had similar, um, you know, similar content to them. So it made it a little bit... Um, confusing. And these are the four images that I pulled out of the quiz or the assessment that I thought um, he might be speaking to on this. Um, like the first one on the left top here, we have, um, uh, as I think I've discussed in class, the idea of an overlaid building over another photograph. I demonstrated that in a slide presentation. And um, I actually made a specific point that that was difficult to do in Photoshop. Um, uh, the potential for transparency and vector artwork, I think, is eliminated because th this isn't vector artwork. This is a rasterized image. It is, it, I guess, at a real stretch, it could be a PDF feature. Uh, but even so, that's just something that we, we haven't addressed or talked about. Um, the final answer, a potential for transparency in PNG files was specifically what was discussed about this. The idea of exporting the building as a PNG file, having alpha channel transparency, and then allowing us to do an overlay with it. So I'm still sticking with um, the ambiguity, if there was any with this, that if you had paid really good attention in lectures, you would have been able to pick this one out easily. And I feel the same way about a lot of these, um, but I, I'll just go over and, and, and kind of point out, I guess, where maybe some of the ambiguity is. Um, in this image uh, below this on the left-hand side, we have a um, what I described as a bitmapped image, showing it as it, having its blurriness as we zoomed in, and then how razor sharp it stayed is if we did it with a, um, a vector-based artwork. And we were talking about making PDF outputs, and so that's where I think it would be very easy to become confused. Um, you know, PDF versus JPEG, because a PDF can contain a vector. And this was probably one that I was really trying to push even further to figure out if you were actually distilling down to the essence of what the difference was. And that was the difference between it being a, a, a rasterized image or a vector image. Um, um, and, um, rasterized meaning a bitmapped image. Um, and if you said, um, say, PDF versus JPEG, you'd be kind of right except that the PDF could also contain a rasterized or JPEG image. So this could actually be resolved down to a J, if it was a PDF, it could be a JPEG and a, versus a JPEG. And that wouldn't be a comparison. That would just be um, a similarity. So this really had a distinctive, this uh, told me that you really deeply understood the concept. Um, the same thing with this uh, top right image. Um, this could be, um, we, it can't be vector artwork because I was specifically showing how it zoomed in and how we had the, the pixelization or the bit mapping of the image. It could be a Photoshop file, but um, um, that would be um, uh, impossible to determine whether it was dealt with in Photoshop or not. And it could be a PDF file, right? It could be a vector file or it could be um, a... Um, 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 yeah, a, a, a vector, or excuse me, a rasterized file inside of a PDF. But clearly, um, the sim simple answer here is a bitmapped image. Um, that's the one that you would absolutely be certain from this graphic above here. So um, this could be a place where we had some kind of a discrimination between, and I'll, I'll have to go back and look at that. And I'm hoping during lecture maybe we could have a little bit more discussion about that. I'd be more than happy to kind of remove some of this ambiguity from this kind of a question. And then this last one is um, this idea of showing you pixels. I showed you this graphic on a lecture, and I discussed how these were RGB pixels. The combination of them all being on made white light. The combination of, of uh, let's say, turning the blue off made the orange-looking color. Showing you the idea that you zoomed in on them, you could see the pixels in more detail. And so the discussions were CMYK pixels. That would be wrong because we talked about how CMYK was the inks that were used for printing. And we had that conversion issue of going from RGB pixels, red, green, and blue, to CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, um, when we went to printing and how we might have um, issues with that. 
a CRT display is really an old fashioned display. It's a cathode ray display. And actually this could be, um, this could be a CRT display. Um, so that's another one that if you really knew about what a CRT display is, that would be something that, that I could have an argument or you could have an argument with me about or a discussion with me about and maybe have a valid point on. And alpha channel reduction is just pure um, me imagining some words. So that the clear answer here, um, if you followed in the lecture, was this were RGB pixels. So, uh, but anyway, we'll further this discussion when we're uh, together in person.